Um, Joran Vandersloot. This morning, we're hearing his stunning confession to the 2005 murder of Natalie Holloway in Aruba. This comes after he pleaded guilty to extorting money from Holloway's mother. Ariel Reshef is here with that. Good morning, Ariel. Good morning to you, Michael. For the first time, we are hearing from Vandersloot in his own chilling words, describing what happened the night that Natalie disappeared, the disturbing details unraveling years of mystery about how and why he killed the Alabama teen. A warning this may be difficult to listen to. This morning, a stunning admission. Nearly two decades after Natalie Holloway went missing, Jorn Vandersloot, the prime suspect in her 2005 disappearance, now heard in his own words, confessing he killed her. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Uh, and I, um, I decide to, to take her and uh, to put her into the ocean. The confession, part of a plea deal in a federal extortion case. Vandersloot describing what he says happened the night Natalie vanished on a high school graduation trip in Aruba after she was last seen leaving a bar with him, saying he attacked her and she fought back, kicking him in the crotch. He says he then kicked her extremely hard in the face. She's laying down uh, unconscious, possibly even, uh, even dead, but definitely unconscious. He then says he bludgeoned her, dragging her body into the ocean. I walk up uh, up to about my knees into the ocean and I push her off into into the into the into the sea. Yeah, after that I I get out, I I walk home. Natalie's mother Beth Holloway telling ABC News the confession confirms what she long believed. Joran Vanderslot is no longer the suspect in Natalie's disappearance. He is the killer. Beth Holloway saying Vandersloat took a polygraph test after lying about what happened for years. The real key to polygraph tests is the art of the polygrapher. And maybe during that polygraph, he told the polygrapher and probably an agent or a detective that was in the room exactly what happened on that beach in 2005. The confession, part of Vandersloat's guilty plea for extortion and wire fraud, admitting he demanded $250,000 from Beth in 2010 in exchange for information about her daughter. A judge sentencing him to 20 years behind bars to serve in conjunction with his 28 year sentence for murdering another woman in Peru. Vandersloat apologizing to the Holloway family in court, saying, I am not the same kind of person today as I was then. I have given my heart to Jesus Christ. But Natalie's father, Dave, releasing a statement saying Vandersloat is evil personified. Beth Holloway saying their family's nightmare is finally over. It's a very victorious day to, to reach this point in a long journey. I did what I had to do as a mother to find answers as to what happened to my daughter. And Natalie's dad saying that Vandersloat tortured their family and he asked that parents hug their children today and every day in Natalie's memory. Guys. I can only imagine what they've gone through. Ariel, thank you so much for that. And let's bring in our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. And Dan, even though we heard that confession, despite that, he cannot be charged with murder. That's right. And I will tell you, that's the first time that I've heard him in his own words. And it is just chilling. chilling. Yeah. For those of us who have followed this case for this long, to finally hear... Joran Vandersloot, in his own words, admit to exactly what he did, gave me chills mm. as I listened to that. But with regard to, to your legal question, th this occurred in Aruba. In the United States, there is no statute of limitations for murder. The crime occurred in Aruba, so it happens under Aruban law. And I've talked to very frustrated people who worked on this case who are frustrated at the fact that Aruba has a 12-year statute of limitations. Uh, for murder. Wow. That's why Joran Vandersloot doesn't have that much to lose in coming forward and making a confession like this. So where is he going to serve the majority of his sentence? Likely back in Peru. So he was extradited back to the United States to deal with the judicial proceedings. He is now going to have that 20-year sentence to serve concurrently with the 28-year, meaning if he gets released early in the 28-year sentence in Peru, he would come back here to serve the remainder of the 20 years. But remember, he's already served 11 of them up to this point. So it's pretty obvious why he agreed to this deal. Yeah, in the end, the ability to serve concurrently and knowing that he can't be charged with murder for what he said, mm. I think this ends up being you know, a, a comparative legal win for him. But, whew. Yeah, listen to that. Even but, hearing that word win after hearing that. I know, I know. I know. It, it, you know it, and I'm sure this was a calculation for him, as he has done many times in his life.
Okay, Dan Abrams, thanks very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.